In case you haven't noticed lately, something is creating a state of chaos across the world. Not only are we seeing a significant climate influx, but the earth is beginning to open up, creating giant fissures. While at the same time, there are bizarre cloud formations and peculiar sky anomalies that are appearing in many places. We know that our climate is quickly changing, but we don't have a definitive handle on the exact reason for the sudden changes. The brutal freeze that is sweeping across Europe has set records that have never before been seen. For example, in Venice, Italy, the canals and lagoons that surround the city have completely frozen over in an extreme weather event that has sent shock waves through the region. Although Venice has seen snow and ice in the past, the waterways have never encountered an event in which they have been completely covered in ice, thus marking a first-time occurrence in the annals of recorded history for this region. On the Mediterranean island of Skopelos in western Greece, a major snowstorm swept across the region, blanketing the Aegean island in snow and ice, as this video shows. And so it now seems that our weather is becoming more unstable and more unprecedented with each passing day. According to media reports, temperatures as low as minus 26 degrees Celsius caused ice to form on the Adriatic Sea. In Poland, temperatures registered minus 20 degrees Celsius. And in Greece's second largest city, the temperatures fell to minus 10 degrees Celsius which is far below the normal for these regions. Here is a chart showing registered temperatures across Germany the first week of January. So as the world's climate continues to deteriorate, temperatures which were once the seasonal norm for these regions will continue to change and become more extreme. While much of Europe is blanketed in ice, the Arctic region is warming at a faster rate than anticipated, as this sea ice concentration data graph is showing. Down below in Antarctica, this drone footage taken this month by a British survey group shows the scale of yet another massive fissure that now threatens a polar base. Watch as the drone reveals the extent of this opening.
In another region of the southern hemisphere, a second massive fissure has mysteriously opened up, this time on the northern cape of South Africa, as these images from January 15th are showing. Now take a look at the drone footage from this area. You can see the scale of the opening that has developed. It certainly is quite alarming. Authorities have sealed off the entire area to tourists or visitors and have given no explanation for its cause. I mentioned in a previous video how these giant fissures are beginning to develop along the Continental Divide here in the United States. These are not just random happenings, they now appear to be happening all over the world. The question is what is causing them to occur and why are they happening so frequently now? I want to spend some time reviewing a series of sky anomalies that were recently recorded because there are indications that some of these observations could be manifestations, while others are signs in the heavens that are given to us as a forewarning of what is to come. Now that statement may seem somewhat contrived if you're someone who doesn't believe in the spiritual realm or in the existence of a higher entity. But for many, this is real and it does portend that we are in a time of great turmoil on this planet. I would like to begin with this video observation that was recorded on January 12th. Now there appears to be a manifestation that appears in the sky. The strange appearance of the sky does not seem to be natural, as I had indicated when this was first posted on our Facebook page. Now this particular video went viral shortly after its posting. Now, some have commented that the video was fabricated after viewing it and noticing that white light would appear in front of the lamp posts while videotaping the phenomenon in motion. Okay, it does show that during the presentation, but it also indicates that the anomaly was recorded using a filter or film of some sort over the camera lens in order to better enhance the capture of this manifestation in the sky. As controversial as this may seem to you, it still has the makings of an extraordinary formation in the sky which does not appear to be manipulated or tampered with.
On the 7th of January, a very strange cloud formation was seen over Jerusalem, which is the second such occurrence in this area in the past couple of months. It was reported that those who witnessed this formation were frightened and bewildered. Now, I must say that there are many people who believe that events such as this are signs that are given which are meant to inform us that a great event will soon occur in the heavens and that we should make all preparations in anticipation of that day. Now again, you can interpret this as you will but I have to take these observations at face value because they represent what was seen at a particular moment in time by those who feel that this is important enough to share with others. And so I do give them the benefit of a doubt because this is what they saw. This video shows an atmospheric phenomenon that has been photographed and videotaped on various occasions in recent times. We often refer to it as a sun dog, but if you look closely at this capture from Russia, you will notice that it seems very unusual. The luminosity shown here is extremely bright, and the figures are diamond-shaped. Could it be possible that the unexplained brightness and oddity of this sun dog is created by the presence of a binary star system that is orbiting around our Sun. It's a thought that was presented by one of our Facebook followers, but like so many other observations these days, it cannot be fully explained. In the past few years, the cumulative number of fireballs and meteors to reach Earth in the first week of January has been staggering, as the NASA chart indicates. The increase can be attributed to an unidentified or an unnamed debris field that has entered into Earth's orbit. As we consider this possibility, there are observations in the sky which can be explained in ways in which people can understand. But there are many things seen in the heavens which defy explanation. This video is one of them. This was captured on January 15th from London, showing something very strange moving across the sky. There has been quite a bit of chatter going on among our YouTube viewers on whether the very bright object seen high in the southwestern sky at sunset is actually Venus. I suppose much of the speculation about what we are actually viewing in the evening sky had originated from the notion by some amateur astronomers that what began as a very bright presence beginning in midsummer was first being reported as the planet Jupiter, which was then corrected to show the presence of Venus later on. As you can see in these two horizon diagrams for 2016 and the first quarter of 17, they show the path of Venus for those of us who live in the Northern Hemisphere. So if we are to accept the fact that these diagrams are accurate, 
then we must ask ourselves why the planet is appearing considerably brighter and closer to the Earth. If its orbit takes it closer to the Sun as it begins its descent from a higher altitude, as these charts represent, then that could explain the immense luminosity of the planet. But it still doesn't explain why both Venus and Mars are still appearing in the same location in the southwestern sky after sunset, where they have been observed for months, which many of you have noticed and commented on. One possible theory that has garnered a great deal of interest on social media is that the orbits of Venus and Mars have been pushed back in their normal movement around the Sun. So if that were the case, then there would have to be a brown or a red dwarf star that is pulling in opposition with the magnetism of our Sun to cause the planets to stall in their orbits. It's the same theory that is being described to explain why the Earth's core is heating up and causing a tremendous increase in high magnitude earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. The theory of a binary star close by could also explain why Venus is displaying a large wingspan which is visible to the naked eye. So when you say that you have never seen this planet so bright or even resembling the star of Bethlehem with its stretched out wings, there is a point to be made that another light source is creating this sky phenomenon. If you carefully observe Venus in the evening sky, you may conclude that its appearance seems odd, almost as if something strange is taking place on the surface of the planet or in its atmosphere, which is mostly comprised of carbon dioxide. As it turns out, you are not alone in your assumption that something is happening to Venus. A group of astronomers have published images that show a huge gravity wave that has been spotted in the upper atmosphere of Venus, which is baffling scientists because it's staying so still above the planet's surface. The new findings came from observations by Japan's Akatsuki spacecraft which has orbited Venus since 2015. The work was detailed on January 16th in the journal Nature Geoscience. So the observations of Venus are very complex and there is certainly much more that we must learn about the atmospheric dynamics that are happening on this planet. If you're curious, like I am, about the changes happening in our solar system and what may be causing these changes, then you have to take a close look at these images, which were taken by an amateur astronomer who shared the photos on our Facebook page. These images suggest that a celestial object is present within the orbit of Venus. The object is in motion and resembles a planetary body. We know that Venus has no moons, so where did the object or objects originate? If the Nibiru system is following the orbital path of Venus, then this could explain the images that are showing a body within its orbit. That's one theory. There is also the consideration that this is the Blue Kachina. If you follow Hopi prophecy and believe in their traditions and their teachings, then you know that the Blue Kachina, also known as the precursor or forerunner to the time of tribulation, will be seen and noticed prior to the arrival of the Red Kachina, also known as the Destroyer or Red Dragon. So what these images may actually be showing is a mystery, as is many things in the universe, but it certainly merits our attention and is worthy of further investigation. It is now apparent that there are some who are involved in operations that are meant to inhibit the public's ability to know and understand what is happening both in our skies and right here on planet Earth. Now it seems that they want to compromise the integrity of the Internet by posting comments that are emotionally charged, irrational, biased, or just off-the-wall rhetoric that makes absolutely no sense. 
It's an organizational effort to criticize and disrupt the process of informing the public about the presence of a rogue planetary system which is on close approach with Earth. As many of you know, Skywatch Media has a large audience of YouTube subscribers, Facebook followers, and website viewers. We spend many hours investigating and analyzing videos, photographic images, and news accounts in an effort to inform all of our viewers, even those who may not agree with us. I believe that our video content and its message stands on its own authority, regardless of whether or not comments are allowed to continue in their usual format. You may or may not be aware of this, but many of the YouTube channels that reference Planet X and the Nibiru Nemesis system are continuously monitored by trolls who utilize a set of overreaching lies to discredit the messenger. It is an attempt to control and manipulate by deliberately targeting the website of a particular individual or group. There are a number of marginal individuals who in their attempt to discredit others are adding absolutely nothing pertinent to the discussion process. We should respect the First Amendment and the beliefs of others, but in so doing we must honor our own integrity without resorting to foul language and verbal threats when voicing our opinions. Many of you have voiced your opinions with civility and respect and I personally thank you for having done so. But others have not been so kind. So in closing, I want to say this to those who cannot abide by our request. If you are going to continue using abusive, inane, blatantly false, or disrespectful rhetoric when submitting comments on our channel, we will monitor them. Just remember this. You don't need a license to write or publish your thoughts. Week of October 2016. Many of our subscribers and listeners who are diligent observers of the movement of the stars and planets across our sky are aware that something is pulling and tugging at the Earth, in effect causing the Earth to wobble in such a manner as to create the effect that the planets and constellations are out of alignment. As it turns out, we are not alone in our interpretation of these observations. There is an indigenous tribe of people living in the Canadian Arctic regions, as well as in Greenland and parts of the United States, whose ancestors were fantastic forecasters of events relating to climate and earth changes. They are called the Inuit people, once known as the Eskimos who were the last native people to arrive in North America. Not long ago, the Inuit elders made a serious proclamation aimed directly at NASA, who continues to insist that climate change is caused by man-made global warming. Their warning was to inform the inhabitants of this planet that the devastating effects of climate change were the result of the Earth shifting due to an erratic wobble, which is in effect causing the sky to change. In this proclamation, the elders note that the sun has been rising in a different position, that the daylight hours have been prolonged in the Arctic, and that temperatures have risen rapidly. According to their observations, not only has the sun changed position, but the moon and stars are not where they should be seen in the night sky. This is affecting temperature and wind patterns across the globe and making weather predictions much more difficult. Let's listen to the Inuit elders as they speak of this dilemma that has come upon the earth. <laughs> Nicola, 
The people of the North are aware of the sudden changes that are taking place on the planet and have earnestly attempted to warn the nations of the world that the Earth's climate is in a downward spiral as a result of a severe tilting of the axis, which can only be caused by outside forces, by an influential power now looming in our solar system. While the American press remains silent on this topic, the Russians have decided to become more forthright on an issue that influences the entire world. The tremendous increase in earth-shattering fireballs and bolids, accompanied by a twisting magnetosphere, continues to occur, while oddities such as reddish rainfall and peculiar sunlight triggered by an out-of-this-world force are frequently unacknowledged by the media. NASA, for its part, continues to publish information that is intended to confuse and bewilder the general public about what is happening to the planet and why it is happening. They wish to keep you twisting in the wind while forces at play continue to impact the Earth's climate and continue to alter the mechanisms that shape this planet, such as volcanic and earthquake activity which are often referred to as earth changes. 
A few months ago, NASA published a study showing that Antarctica is actually gaining more ice than it is losing. They made the announcement after using satellites to examine the heights of the region's ice sheet. The findings contradict the prevailing theory that Antarctica has actually been shrinking. However, it's important that you understand that the authors of this study are from NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center, and the cause of this ice gain isn't entirely known. They are just theories. It is worth mentioning that NASA was blasted by dozens of their own scientists regarding their global warming stance even though a number of the world's top scientists have questioned just how much an impact CO2 gases have on climate change. So what then would we consider to be the cause of such a fluctuation in global mean temperatures across a region such as Antarctica or the Arctic? Changes in the Earth's orbit would be a likely culprit to such fluctuations causing the seasons to become longer in duration and thus creating a scenario where the Earth either heats up at a more rapid pace or cools down to such an extent as to create another mini ice age. But NASA wants to have their cake and eat it too. In other words, they want you to believe that the temperature fluctuations are the result of greenhouse gas levels in the atmosphere rather than a planet that is in a severe wobble and shifting due to outside forces. Is there a purpose behind NASA's campaign of deception? It's a matter of interpretation, but skepticism abounds when it seems apparent that the absolute truth is being suppressed about the sudden rise in temperatures and the subsequent increase in catastrophic events that are unprecedented in nature that are happening all across the globe. There are many so-called stewards of the earth who understand that there is much more to this story than what we are being told. It's a fact that many humans have no consideration for their environment or their natural surroundings, as money has taken precedence over the planet's health and well-being. And yet there are powerful forces at play in our universe and across the solar system that are having a profound effect on our planet and the welfare of its inhabitants. Let's take a look at some of the latest video and image captures of the Nemesis Nibiru system that is now traveling through our backyard and making its presence known across many regions of the globe. A video was recently posted on Facebook taken in an outdoor setting in Los Angeles on October the 9th. The remarkable thing about this video, more than the fact that the second sun is visible to the left, is that some sort of electromagnetic pulsation or a solar eruption of some sort is occurring with our sun. What's especially interesting about this video is that it almost replicates a video of the sun that was captured on October the 8th in North Carolina. Take a look at the intense flashing and pulsation happening in this video.
This image from Australia posted on October the 8th shows the Tucson phenomenon. Now the trolls who frequent this channel will tell you this is not real, that it was taken behind double pane glass. But there is something quite unique about this image. The second sun is actually casting its reflection in the water. This is something that a lens flare cannot do. If you look carefully, you will see several lens flares located above the water line, none of which are casting the reflection upon the water. So when someone tries to convince you into believing that lens flare anomalies or a refraction from the camera lens can actually create a false reflection on the water, I would take that interpretation with a grain of salt. Where the system is visible at any given moment, will depend on the angle of the Earth's rotation in relation to the retrograde movement of the binary star system at the time in which the image is captured. If you haven't noticed, the second sun is getting closer to us. This is because the system is moving to a position above the ecliptic where its visibility will become more apparent. In June of last year, I published a video showing the Nemesis Companion appearance in South Africa from a sunset location near the South African Large Telescope. The capture of this object, whether it be the second sun or the red planet Nibiru, has been noticed from this location for several months. Now, a number of shills and debunkers dismissed the image from last year, claiming, as they always do, that it was nothing more than a lens flare. Well, I have some video coverage that was taken from this location just a few days ago on October the 8th. As you will see in this video footage, the clouds partially obscure this object passing in front of it. So how is it that clouds can pass between the so-called lens flare and our view of this object? The answer is they cannot, as this is not a lens flare. Now I encourage you to check this out for yourself. So rather than accept my interpretation of this video, go to the site listed here and view the time lapse video. Here is a video capture from the Moon Glow Observatory in Warrensburg, Missouri, taken on September the 19th, showing the binary sun as well as one of the planets of this system, resembling the appearance of the Blue Star Kachina, which the Hopi Nation has referred to as the harbinger to the day of purification here on Earth. There is no doubt that two suns are observable from this observatory web camera. In September, a pair of space weather balloons were launched from opposite sides of the United States to measure cosmic rays in the atmosphere. During the flights, a spherical camera captured unique images of Earth from the stratosphere. This fully interactive and spinnable and zoomable view of the Atlantic coast from an altitude of 108,000 feet reveals something quite striking. As the sun comes into view, you will notice that there are disc rings around the sun. Now, why is this observation that important? Because what you are viewing here portends that something very large is lurking at some distance behind the sun. And that is definitely something that is disconcerting or something that should certainly raise some red flags. But there is something else in this video uh, that is captured in the far distance. Take a look at this planetary object here. Does this look familiar to you? 
Could this be the infamous Planet X Nibiru, which is the largest planet within the binary star system Nemesis? Something now appears to be lurking somewhere within the inner solar system. Could it be that this is what NASA was trying to hide from the public when they shut down the ISS cameras? It has been widely reported that they have been concealing videotaped images of UFOs from the International Space Station. So hiding something as massive as what is coming our way is certainly not out of the realm when it comes to the workings of NASA. In my previous video, I described how climate change and the extreme weather events that are related to these changes are creating havoc on the planet. Mega Hurricane Matthew had a tremendous impact on the United States, to the Caribbean island of Haiti, and to the Bahamas. The tidal surge from this storm was one of the most powerful ever recorded, causing widespread flooding along the Atlantic coast of the United States and claiming the lives of more than 1,000 people in its wake. One cannot describe how serious this is becoming. It is happening too often and its effects are long lasting. Take a look at these before and after images from North Carolina. It tells its own story. Just prior to the formation of Megastorm Matthew, another superstorm on the opposite side of the world hit Taiwan. It was the strongest typhoon to strike the region in recent memory. Take a look at this amazing video, which gives you an idea of the force of this storm. Not only is the weather becoming more violent and more intense, but strange space rocks and objects of unknown origin are entering the Earth's atmosphere. Take a look at this astonishing early morning Facebook video from Arizona, captured on September 19th. Is this a meteor or asteroid crashing through the stratosphere, or a precursor to what is coming our way?
There are also strange sounds emanating from the heavens, a phenomenon which defies logical explanation. On October 2nd, the sounds of trumpets could be heard in the sky over Jerusalem. Is this a warning from the heavens as described in biblical scripture? Listen to the sound. It is almost deafening to the ears. Also notice the odd shape of the clouds above the city. They form a large circle in the place where the strange sound is originating. These images were taken just yesterday, October 13th, from Australia. It is a very disturbing capture, as it indicates that the Nemesis system is getting closer and appearing much larger in recent photos. There are many things happening now that we do not fully comprehend. Maybe we are not meant to know these things because they will inevitably cause fear and paranoia among society. My many years of investigation into the existence of Planet X leads me to believe, as it does for many others, that NASA knows that there is a brown dwarf star called Nemesis that is orbiting around our solar system, that this star has seven planets and moons of its own. They have known about this invading system for decades but have kept it a secret all this time, realizing that the time would arrive when they could no longer keep it hidden. That time has arrived. I'll close this presentation with this video that was captured on September 9th in California. This explains why the passage of this system can no longer be hidden from the public. It's there in front of our eyes, we can almost touch it, and still they try to tell us it doesn't exist. As the second sun sets below the horizon, it casts its reflection upon the waters in a scene which is almost picturesque, and yet its presence foretells of something much more sinister in nature, something wicked which this way cometh. June 1st, 2016. Hey folks. In our last video, we discussed how the Earth is experiencing an enormous increase in volcanic eruptions in just the past few months. And we also said that the numbers of earthquakes registering six or above on the scale has also risen dramatically at the same time. We also mentioned that those individuals living along the West Coast, and specifically in the region of the Pacific Northwest, should be preparing for a mega quake, followed by a massive tsunami of catastrophic proportions, as well as the probability of violent volcanic eruptions in their neighborhood. Now, we mention these scenarios not because we think it is going to happen or we believe it is going to happen, but because we are being warned by both seismologists and volcanologists that it is going to happen, just as it did occur 315 years ago in the year 1700. Now, it may be easy to dismiss this as just a coincidence in the timing of events, except for the realization that the events we are seeing unfold in this region, and for that matter across the globe, are getting progressively worse. And we have presented the scientific charts to you in our previous videos that argue this point, that the Earth is getting extremely unstable. Of course, it is just as easy to imagine a host of reasons why this is happening. We can say it's a natural occurrence. The earth is going through a cycle of events. Or the sun is to blame for the increase in activity. Which is exactly what agencies such as NASA and the USGS would want you to believe. 
But the evidence is suggesting that something more complex is causing these dramatic Earth changes. And that something, we believe, is a rogue system of planetary bodies that have entered into our own solar system and are presently creating havoc here on Earth. But if you have been paying attention to what is developing in the solar system, it is not only planet Earth that is being affected by the presence of these mysterious objects. It is virtually all of the planets in our solar system that are being affected in some manner or another. In fact, in this installment of the weatherspace.com video edition, developments on Jupiter has transformed the appearance of the solar system's largest planet, one of the main, two main cloud belts on Jupiter has completely disappeared. Now, we're not talking about fading here, folks. It has completely disappeared. Take a look at these two pictures. They say it's a big event, but they're monitoring the system very closely, and they do not fully yet understand what is going on. Of course not. We don't know what's going on. We haven't lived for millions of years to see all this stuff that goes on with the planet. Something might be going on with the solar system that we don't know about. This picture shows before, August 4th, 2009. You see the belt, and then take a look at after, on May 8th, 2010. Look at that. The belt has completely disappeared. Now, what would trigger something that disappeared? In my opinion, it will probably be something to do with the weather patterns, probably the upper atmosphere messing around with the planet's uh, clouds. But guess what? Now, that doesn't stop right there. If it affects Jupiter, can it be a global event? They always say the sun controls the weather, so we might be looking at some kind of an event where maybe the Earth patterns might just change. The upper level pattern in the Earth just might change our climate over the next, oh, maybe 20 years or so. But this is happening so fast. Before, in 2009, Jupiter had a belt. After that, now in 2010, it doesn't. Let's keep an eye on our own planet. In fact, if you've been observant, you will have noticed that our neighbor planets of Venus, Jupiter, and Mars have been increasingly luminant. In other words, they've been much brighter in the night sky. Certainly much brighter than what I can recall as a young boy who was so fascinated in the stars and the planets. What other than another presence in our solar system, whether it be some sort of dwarf planet, a failed star, or a binary companion to our sun, that could cause these changes that are occurring not only in our solar system, but here on planet Earth. So, are governments across the world aware of its presence? Do they know exactly what is happening to our planet? And are they making preparations for what they expect or anticipate will take place? Have you heard about the program called Cascadia Rising? You probably haven't heard of this if you're one of those individuals who just relies on mainstream media for your news. But then again, you're, you're probably not going to hear much about this from the cable news networks because it isn't in their best interest to let you know. Cascadia Rising is a large-scale disaster preparedness exercise that will be conducted by the government agency FEMA. Starting next week, between June 7th and the 10th, in the Pacific Northwest. So, of course, the question arises as to why an exercise of such significance is about to take place by a federal agency. Certainly an exercise that's going to be very expensive and time-consuming. Why conduct this if that particular agency wasn't concerned or even knew that something catastrophic or life-threatening was about to happen. Now, we are being told, according to the report, that this preparedness exercise will be conducted in such a way as to simulate a 9.0 magnitude quake along the Cascadia subduction zone, which quake would be followed by a tsunami that would create waves more than 50 feet in height. Okay, so think about that. 50 feet, that's approximately the height of a five-story building, which by any means would be absolutely devastating to any type of structure or edifice which stands in its way. 
The drill will bring together local and state emergency responders, FEMA, and a number of military organizations and government first responders. The drill comes as a number of top scientists are warning the Cascadia subduction zone is a disaster waiting to happen. While most people have heard of the San Andreas fault line in California, very little attention has been given to the Cascadia subduction zone. But when compared to the San Andreas, the Cascadia subduction zone is a much larger uh, threat and a more scarier threat than is the San Andreas Fault. The Cascadia Rising Preparedness Drill will test plans that have been put together over the last couple of years. Plans that expects in the neighborhood, if not more than, 14,000 deaths, 30,000 injuries, and the complete devastation of the Pacific Northwest Coast. According to planners, the quake could devastate the region for decades and could displace a million people from Northern California to Southern Canada. So, how bad could it get? Well, over 7 million people throughout the region could be affected by the Cascadia subduction zone. When the quake hits, the force is expected to cause liquefaction across large areas of the porous region. And in areas that aren't liquefied, the force of the quake could cause huge landslides, devastating destruction to thousands of bridges and buildings, and could cause as many as 30,000 avalanches in Seattle alone. Now, the following model, which we're going to show to you here in just a second, was created by the NWS Pacific Tsunami Warning Center, also referred to as PTWC. It's based off of modeling from an earthquake that hit the area on January the 27th of the year 1700, approximately 315 years ago, which caused a massive tsunami that actually struck the coast of Japan. So traveled for thousands of miles across the Pacific Ocean. Now officials are planning for a disaster unlike anything we've ever seen. The response will include the deployment of civilian and military personnel and will exceed anything we've ever had to respond to as a country. So think about that for a minute. Anything we've ever had to respond to as a country, what in the world could cause such a response by our government? So the response will be orders of magnitude larger than Hurricane Katrina or Superstorm Sandy. Now this is according to Lieutenant Colonel Clayton Braun, who's with the Washington State Army National Guard. So here we have an immediate call to action from state and federal agencies that indicates there is an imminent threat to both life and infrastructure as a result of the instability of the region. But one thing's missing here. They fail to indicate in the report as to the rush to action here. Why is it so important that this be conducted at this time? What is the significance of conducting the exercise now as opposed to, let's say, last year or the year before or five years ago or, for that matter, two years from now? What is so important about this date? What is it that they seem to know that the rest of us aren't aware of or aren't being told about? Is it possible that they are preparing for what is coming our way from the dark regions of space? I first heard of Planet X in 2001 shortly after the 9-11 incident when a lot of people were searching the Internet to see if there was some sort of correlation 
between the terrorist attack on the World Trade Center and the prophecies of Nostradamus. It was during this time frame that millions of people were also searching Google to learn what they could about these mysterious rogue planets that could wreak havoc on the other planets in our solar system. Now, the likelihood of such an event occurring in our lifetime had for a long time been considered nothing more than a wild conspiracy theory. But now people were actually becoming genuinely concerned about its existence and about what effect it would have on our planet. In 2009, I interviewed uh, a gentleman, J. R. Moore, who has a, a national radio show. In the interview, he indicated that he had spoken with some retired naval brass who were moving to the Ozarks for safety. So you say, why the Ozarks? Well, for one thing, the region is more than 1,000 feet above sea level, and thus it would be a safe location from rising waters, which is something that is expected to occur if we have a flyby of the Planet X system. Now, that interview was published um, on our YouTube playlist, and it's published under the title Nibiru Truth and the Global Warming Cover-Up. And I would encourage you to, to listen to it in its entirety, as it does tell us a very interesting story of what preparations the government is making or has made to get ready for the passage of the Planet X system. X system. Now, Russia believes that this system exists, and they are presently building shelters in Moscow and throughout the country in preparation for its flyby. In the United States, preparations have been underway for many years in anticipation of the passage of the Planet X system. One of these massive underground facilities is believed to be located beneath the Denver International Airport but it is off-limits to both the public and the media as a top-secret facility. There has also been considerable controversy revolving around the deaths or the mysterious disappearances of individuals in the scientific community who have become whistleblowers with regard to Planet X or a dwarf star in our solar system. Some of you may already know the story behind Dr. Robert Harrington, the chief astronomer of the U.S. Naval Observatory, who, di who died before he could publicize the fact that Planet X is approaching our solar system. Many feel his death is part of a cover-up, one in which government agencies quickly moved to conceal the most earth-shaking discovery in history. So we are certain that the studies that Harrington was conducting in his quest to locate Planet X are very real. But whether he actually died from cancer or was silenced by the elite is still a question worth investigating today. Now on the flip side of the coin, two reports were recently published by a new site called someonesbones.com. One of those reports states that in 2010, an ominous YouTube video posted by a user calling himself Nibiru Shock provided the world with the first substantiated images of the Nibiru system. These images, which are being shown here now, were reportedly substantiated by Marshall Masters, who is a former science features editor for CNN News and who is now a Planet X researcher who has a website which is yowusa.com. That's Y-O-W-U-S-A.com. The uh, persona known as Nibiru Shock was reportedly proven to be Professor Ronald Jason Patrick, a scientist who worked at the Australian Astronomical Observatory, who apparently died in an airplane crash earlier this year. 
Now the other report, and the one which has sparked a firestorm across astronomical and conspiracy theory internet communities, is the one that involves an individual named Dr. Ronald Shimschuk. Now, I have to admit that I have never heard of this individual, and very little is actually known about him, other than what is being reported on, on various alternative news sites. Now, he reportedly is an MIT graduate. His credentials include seven years at McDonnell Douglas, four years employment at Boeing, and three at NASA. He also was employed as an astronomical consultant at the Arecibo Observatory in Puerto Rico. Now, according to the alleged interview that was conducted with Dr. Shimschuk, he stated that the Nibiru system is very real, that it is essentially a solar system of its own which will intersect with our solar system. Now, at its heart is a brown dwarf star approximately one-eighth the size of our sun. The brown dwarf is orbited by seven planets or moons, some smaller than our moon and some larger than Earth. Of greatest concern is the third planet of this system, which is several times Earth's mass with a nickel-iron core. It is predicted that this planet will pass within 0 0.3 AU of Earth or roughly within 27 million miles of our planet. Now, a follow-up interview with this astrophysicist was supposed to take place with a YouTube personality, Steve Olson. But Dr. Shimchuk somehow mysteriously disappeared shortly into that interview. Now, we have been able to locate a website that has recently appeared on the internet that details who this individual is and contains a validated photograph of Nibiru, which is said to be the first substantiated image taken in the Northern Hemisphere, which uh, we are showing to you here now. It is important to note that I'm, I'm using the term reportedly in referring to these articles because they can't be substantiated. We're uncertain of their authenticity or the accuracy of the report and furthermore I have been unable to find any credible information as it relates to either of these individuals uh, that can corroborate their existence in any way or the information they are attempting to provide to the public. Another story that is sweeping the social media circuit, and one which, if true, could have been a deliberate attempt to inform the public, is one that involves Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth. The report says the following. Queen Elizabeth stunned BBC production staff yesterday while preparing to deliver the Queen's speech at the state opening of Parliament, hinting that she is planning to abdicate the throne and flee the United Kingdom a BBC insider claims. Quote, One is making the necessary preparations to abandon ship, Her Majesty said. A violent storm is coming, the likes of which Britain has never seen. Her Majesty was speaking to her advisers while taking on the Parliament robe of state and the Imperial State crown in the robing chamber. However, she was already wearing a microphone and her comments were heard by the whole gallery. She seemed angry that she had to remain neutral in her speech. She said there is solid intelligence from military top brass that if we don't Brexit, there is an inevit inevitable World War III scenario that will play out, the insider said. World War II will seem like a bump in the road compared to this. I must warn my subjects, the Queen said. The line was cut off at this point, and BBC production staff were urgently addressed by the director, John Kirby. 
He said he had been warned by BBC executives that the head of state had been shooting her mouth off a lot lately and that we must all ignore, forget, delete from our memories everything that we have heard from her. By warning advisors that she has made the necessary preparations to flee the country, is she hinting that she has inside information of the darkest kind? Of course, it is all speculation, more than likely coming from the British tabloids. But then, we can't be too certain of that either, as the heads of state have been acting quite peculiar these days, sort of on edge and a bit uneasy, and yet we're not really sure of the reasons for their odd behavior. But until it becomes known to all, we can only wait it out. So let's get to the nuts and bolts of this presentation. There is good reason to believe that the Nibiru Planet X system is entering into or nearing the inner solar system, which would place it somewhere between Jupiter and Mars, which is the outermost of the four planets which comprise the inner solar system. In addition to the tremendous numbers of volcanoes erupting in recent weeks, and the increased numbers of earthquakes greater than 6.0, which we already talked about in this video, there are a number of other reasons to consider in making this analysis. One being the tremendous increase in asteroid and fireball activity since the beginning of 2016, as this chart is showing you. If the Planet X system is approaching the asteroid belt, which is situated between Jupiter and Mars, then this could explain the influx in cosmic activity as of late, since the tail of this system would be thrusting these objects out of their normal orbit within the belt and outwards towards the Earth. The fact that the Earth's magnetic field is collapsing should be of great concern to us all, because it foretells of a pole shift that will uh, punch holes in the ozone layer, destroy power grids, cause extreme weather events across the globe, and weaken our ability to fight the effects of damaging rays. The closer that the Planet X system gets, it less likely that our magnetic field will be able to withstand its powerful influence on the Earth's core, resulting in a catastrophic flip of the poles. The most compelling reasons can most likely be seen in the following videos, which I'm going to present to you, which I believe are very convincing captures of the Nibiru complex within our solar system. Now, I would like to thank those individuals who were diligent in capturing these remarkable images and sharing them with us here on the social media sites. Now this first video, which was posted in our video comment section, was captured in the Pacific Northwest and depicts what has been commonly referred to as two suns. Now it's a very bright planet. We believe it is the innermost planet in the Planet X system, which revolves around Nemesis, the companion star to our sun. So take a look at this video. Now, in observing this video, you will see that this planet Helion moves with the sun in a natural manner behind the clouds and is an object that generates its own light, thus ruling out any form of lens flare or atmospheric anomaly. There has been several observations of this planet in the past month, including this capture from December of 2015, as well as the live webcam capture of this large gaseous planet 
from Sao Vicente in Brazil in April of this year. The next video is one that I consider to be one of the most definitive captures of the Planet X system, as this panorama view taken in Alaska will show. In observing this video, you will notice that the webcam first records the setting sun, at which time another very bright object, possibly a binary dwarf star or companion to our sun, appears and also proceeds to set over the horizon, followed by a trail of smaller planetary objects in succession, a tale that has often been referred to as the string of pearls, which are now appearing in Skycam videos around the world. This is by all means an incredible capture and defies explanation. Now, when I say that the video defies explanation, it means that it would be very difficult for debunkers to claim that the objects of interest are just lens flare or sky anomalies or some sort of refraction or reflection coming from the web camera itself. As you can see from the video, our sun has already set below the horizon when the objects of interest begin entering into the picture as a separate light source one after another in succession. Are you aware of the blue star Kachina? It has been appearing in the sky recently. In Frank Waters' writings on Hopi mythology, the blue star Kachina is a spirit that will signify the coming of the beginning of the new world by appearing in the form of a blue star. The blue star Kachina is said to be the ninth and final sign before the day of purification, described as a catastrophe or a world engulfing cataclysm that will lead to the purification of planet Earth. As you can see in these recently published images, it seems the Hopi prophecy is coming to fruition, as in a short period a mysterious blue star or planet has appeared in the skies around the world. Last month a strange blue star or planet was seen in the skies over Arizona, Spain, and in the British Isles. As you can see, they all appear to represent the same blue object. Hopi were instructed to tell of the great purification just ahead of the time when humankind would once again become highly civilized, tending to become careless and leading us to self-destruction. They said that along the way, the industrialized world will have certain problems. People will be uncomfortable because of the changing times, and they will have to make adjustments to find new lifestyles. It is said that after the appearance of the blue Kachina, the red Kachina, which is known to be the planet Nibiru, the outermost planet in the Planet X system, will come and will bring the day of purification. On this day, the earth and all life as we know it will change forever. It may be that the Hopi Indians were correct in their prophetic teachings about the purification of this world. Now, the last video we're going to present here um, was provided to Skywatch Media News in early March of this year by one of our Facebook followers. As you can see, there is a very clear capture of what appears to be the blue Kachina to the far right of the sun. Now this video is very similar to the images that we just presented to you in this video.